Bell. You'll probably think he's really, really cool. You would have thought he was really, really triff, but that's out now. Anyway, let us see him, first of all, at work. We told you not to look, didn't we? Right, you point it in that direction, right? Okay. I'm just moving over here. Okay. Pandemonium. You see, that's what happens when you look down the bottomless bin because it is a bin <laughs> bin on the bottom. <laughs> that was good in the rehearsal, wasn't it? Right. <laughs> right, okay. It's time for the last, or next to last, because Sarah's going to do it a little bit later on, but my last treasure hunt. So he's very exciting. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, children, here he really, really is, the chap they call the sexiest man in Britain, Philip Schofield. I am absolutely terrified about my battery. Can't get away from sex, can we? <laughs> See, they all want to talk about sex. Here we are trying to be responsible. We wish to talk about television, sorry, literature. Sir. Everybody yes. keeps changing the subject. Behave, I okay. say. Behave. I want to tell you that my daughter will now be experiencing the first greatest jealousy of her mother. I mean, this is, this is quite an experience. I am sitting there. He's smiling at me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, boring old me. <laughs> but, uh, nice. do, you, do you take that very responsibly? Does it worry you, that adulation that you receive? It puts a bit of pressure on your shoulders um, <clears throat> because I would like to think that anybody who was going to put their children in front of a television programme that I'm involved in would feel that what was going to come out of the screen would be responsible television. But at the same time, you've got to be fun and you can't preach. I try very hard not to preach, although I think I'm quite aware of the problems of growing up now. I think it's a, it's a terrifying time to be growing up. There are so many problems that I didn't experience at all when I was at school. Um, and I, I do feel that pressure sometimes. It is a little bit worrying. It means that you've got to stay as Mr. Clean, doesn't it? I mean, you have a responsibility to them in that Yeah, that's a, it's a, that's a tricky one, the, the Mr. Nice Guy image. And, and, and I would actually think that I'm, I'm not that bad. I'm, I'm OK. And the, the person that I am on screen, I think, is, is very much the, the same as the person that I am out on the street. Um, but the Mr. Nice Guy image, again, is, is a, it can be a bit of a turn-off. If, uh, well, you know, he doesn't know. He doesn't know what we're going through. He doesn't understand. What do they write to you about? Pretty well everything and anything. If, um, if they have a problem with either boyfriends or girlfriends and things, then I may get letters in that respect. Exams, at the moment, they're, they're just starting the GCSE, so I'm getting letters on that. So they want your advice, how to cope with it all? Yes, which is, once again, is a little bit of pressure because I, I find it very hard. I, I will read those letters and they are absolutely confidential. But to give advice is a very tricky one because mm. I, I'm not a parent, so I, I'm not sure in, in certain areas I don't understand. I know, I know as I said, the problems that are, that, that are happening. But once again, to give someone advice that may, you know, sort of, that would last. You know, but you, really you always intended to be on the telly, didn't you? I mean, it was always oh, yeah. your intention to, to end up here. You're not complaining. No, no, not at all. <laughs> I not mean, is, all. It, is it right you set up a television station in your bedroom? Yep. My brother, who, who is seven years younger than I am, I'm convinced that his first words weren't mummy or daddy, but were no comment. Because I used to race around with a, with a cardboard box on top of the tea trolley trying to interview him. And at the time, he was really involved in playing post offices. And we had separate rooms, and he would be playing post offices quite quietly in his room, and I'd come bursting through the door. Would you please tell us the story? I understand that there are problems in your post office at the moment, and you, that's possibly going to be a strike. <laughs> and he's seven years younger than I. I was all wondering what was going on. You were going to be a reporter? Yeah. Oh, I was going to, I was going to be everything. I was going to be a grave digger. <laughs> on the telly. It's a good not, job in telly. Yeah. <laughs> not on the telly, but, uh, but when, the, the first job I ever said that I wanted to do was going to be, I was going to be a grave digger. But I was going to make holes in the top of all the lids and I'd have the straws coming through just in case. <laughs> Nobody would ever accuse like me of Like lying under the bamboo, you know, sucking That's it through it, a just in case. Who were your idols then? Um, in the early days, I, 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 used to, I used to watch quite a bit of television. Um, obviously, the, the, the powerful men and stuff like that, I used to watch a lot. But as I got older and, and developed idols, um, I suppose, really, the first time I really watched a programme that I thought... 
I would love to do that was when Noel Edmonds was doing multicolour swap. I knew you were going to say yeah. Noel Edmonds. Yeah. I feel it coming. Who were your idols, Maureen? Joyce Grenfell was one. Beryl Reed, Margaret Rutherford. I watched her this afternoon on the telly. What is? She sent Trinian's movie. Ah, uh, oh, wonderful. She was fabulous. Terrific. Mm. Ro, are you nodding off down the end? No. <laughs> no, I was going to try and find an answer to the question you're going to ask me. Go on, then. Uh, it's hard to find. I, I, I think I'm old days, you know, uh, the old old goons and funny people. I d I, I'm not, I don't really have television. You didn't, you didn't have pin ups. I don't have. Don't have telly. Uh, they have telly, absolutely. You wrote a very nasty yeah. poem about it once, didn't yes, you? Yes, I did. Saying no, it's very bad for children. Uh, I think uh, some of it's very good and a lot of it's very bad, yes. It takes them away from their home. I, I think what's terribly bad is when they scoot home from school and it's on yeah. straight away. I think that's bad. Do you demand that it be turned off in your house, Maureen? No, I don't make many demands at all. Well, I'm not there a lot, of course. But I... <laughs> No, I mean, I, I think, you know, I think they can uh, decide for themselves. I, I give them better You're intention. very I think, trusting. Well, I think life's full of good and bad, and they have to learn what to, what to accept and what no, to reject. No, no, because they take all the good, and that what they consider to be good is sitting in front of the telly, being entertained. But well, mine what, what I want them to do to is read a good book. No, mine don't. Mine do read a good book, and they... And they, they, they don't watch a lot of telly. The one thing I, that, that bothers me about telly is when people leave it on when you call round and it's sort of like a terrible eye in the corner, really. Yes. But if they came home from school and weren't allowed to watch television, as, as Roll says, they would miss half of the programmes that have, that have been done from your, from your books. I used to introduce <laughs> them. Well, well I, I don't care about, I don't care about that because my, my, my job is really not to make television programmes from the books or anything. My job is simply to produce books. Uh, to my way of thinking, the television programmes come and go, you know. Well, they're, they're, they're transitory. Philip is rather less than transitory at the moment because you're stuck in there, and as I say, you've got thousands of fans. Um, so, good on you. Thank Ladies you. and gentlemen, Philip Schofield.